right, welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Now, South Africa is part of the International Telecommunication Union, or ITU, who have set a deadline for the worldwide move of all broadcasters to a digital service by June next year. We have not migrated yet, and there are many reasons for this, ranging from funding to the Competition Commission, ensuring fairness in uh, the television broadcast sector over the internet services, to um, one can say creation and distribution of set-top boxes. Communications Minister Mamuluko Kubain Gubani joins us now to give us an update as to how things are looking for us here in terms of migrating. Minister, good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming good through. Good morning, Palace, and thank you for having me here. Now, the process has been dragging for so many years now, and, and I believe some of our viewers might have even forgotten the advantage of migrating to digital. I think definitely so. We started a long time ago with uh, Minister Mutsepe Kasaburi at that time. So you can imagine how far mm. that is. And definitely, unfortunately now, because we set deadlines for ourselves. So the way, the way in terms of ITU, we, we could, International um, Telecommunications um, Union, we could um, set ourselves, we set a deadline for 2015, which we passed. But the one that we are facing now, it's a deadline that is set for the world. And that's compulsory. That's compulsory sure. for us to meet. That's a 2019 deadline. So there are advantages in terms of the quality of viewing. Um, being able to watch TV, even in the areas where, for example, analog um, TVs are not able to get signal, when you are on a digital platform, you are able to get a signal. So there are advantages because we see this from a communication point of view. More of our communities will be able to have access to information because viewing TV and listening to a radio station it's not only about entertainment, but it's about the ability for South Africans to have information about their government, about issues that affect them, about legal issues. So it, it serves various purposes. So with the digital migration, it, it will ensure that South Africans have access to information as per the Constitution. Yeah, in a better quality more so. Yes. Now, you literally have 18 months, Minister, to make sure that everything is in order and your department needs close to 6.6 .6 billion rand. Where are you going to locate the money? Look, there, there are various options that are being looked at. One, we do have some money. Out of that 6.6 .6 billion, we do have 1.2 that we currently have been allocated that we are working on. Um, we're looking at various partnerships. We're looking at various efforts so that we, we can be able to. we also engaging our national treasury not only looking at the fiscal, but looking at other means, where else can we get the money to assist us to migrate? So there are various issues, and especially because this is not an option. Mm -hmm. um, it's a deadline that we have on top of us, and we understand where Treasury comes from because they did allocate money previously. We were underspending as the department, not being able to spend the money, so they had to cut down because we couldn't prove that we can spend the money. So we have to go back to them to say we are spending the money, we are reaching the deadline. We are, around the, we are meeting the deadline around the clock. Yeah, and you were telling me earlier on that you're working on a very tight, um, of course, deadline, uh, your office, your workers are already in the office as it is right now. Talk to us about the deadline for registration. I know that you've completed the Northern Cape Province and the Free State and Northwest are next. Yes, we are currently in Free State and Northwest. Um, we sort of worried about a number of communities, that um, households that are not away, that we have a deadline. All the Free State and Northwest resi residents, those who are earning 3,000 and below who are South Africans, need to go to post office and register. And their deadline is by end of March, the 31st of March 2018. Anyone who is around Free State, around Northwest, they need to go to the nearest post office to register because we are rolling out. By June this year, would be done with Free State and Northwest. And we'll stagger the provinces as we go. So we will be announcing as we go, but for now we are in free state. We are registering currently. We are seeing the low numbers and we are seeing residents because once we're done with free state, we will not be able to come back now. Anyone who qualifies, who has an income of 3,200 and below, who does not register, once we are done with and the 31st has passed, they are going to have to buy themselves. Mm. They will not have a subsidized 
government's set top box given to them. All right, let's talk about this thorny issue of encryption. And I've seen on Twitter some people actually saying that it looks like the minister is for encryption. Talk to us about that issue because it was even at the Concord at, at one stage. No, Palisa, the issue I was saying to somebody, one, policy is not based on individuals. So I don't have my preference in terms of policy. Policy is for government. Secondly, I might have maybe to say, following what the comments in the public space says, that from a gov government point of view or from an NC as a governing party, the motion was that we should go for encryption. The challenge I have now is to say, do, what choice do I have right now? Mm -hmm. I have 18 months. If you look at the government process of changing policy, that's the difficulty. I would need first to start developing a policy go out consulting stakeholders, including other departments, go to cabinet to have approval of that policy, have that policy published for not less than 30 days sure. for comments. Mm -hmm. Then after the comments, incorporate the comments, take it back to cabinet before I can even say. So sometimes you can say not less than six months mm. that you're going to. Now I have 18 months sure. to deliver the project. That's a process. And together with the team. I mean, we're sitting with the team every day. Like now, as I'm sitting here, 7 o'clock, the project management is meeting. If I'm not here, every Monday I'm with them at 7 o'clock to look at progress weekly, where we are, because we understand the deadline. But are you hopeful that you'll meet the deadline? I am definitely hopeful. We've got the project plan. That's what I'm saying. We're treating it as an emergency type of a project. That's why we've set up what we call a war room for DTT, where project plan and project team is live continuously. So you walk into that room, you can see currently what is happening mm -hmm. daily. Somebody's updating information to say, this is what we are having, these are the challenges so that we can be able to, to roll out. We have called various stakeholders to be part of the project team. For example, National Treasury, DTI, other sectors that are having a role to play in terms of the entities, SAPO, Centec, uh, USASA, so that they can be part of that. Where do we find glitches, for example, we can solve them. One of the things we have picked up even now was that on the border lines of the transmissions, where Centec has put transmission poles, on the border lines, the signal is, is, is very low. So we're looking at that to strengthen the signal. We've asked Centec to look at that. So it helps to have such a project team. Okay. Equally, one of the difficulties and why I have, there's so much threat. The team was saying to me, Minister, we have to because the analog um, signal uh, infrastructure from Centec is deteriorating. Okay. If we don't migrate, we have to upgrade that. Mm. Now you can imagine we don't have even money to maintain the dual illumination. We have dual, dual illumination currently. What we call dual illumination is when you run analog signal and run digital. So you are running them parallel, mm -hmm. both of them together. Now that's the weakness we have currently. That's the difficulty. Now if you are to have money again, which we don't yeah. have, to go and find, to upgrade, the analog that you have to get rid of it's a waste of yeah. money. So there is so many things that are against us. Hence, I'm saying it's no longer an issue of who prefers the encryption or non-encryption. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's about what is best for this country. What is it that we have to do now uh, to deal with this? And it's unfortunate that we had to yeah. reach this point. All right. A quick one on this, Minister. The Competition Commission matter. The report, is it expected to be released soon? Yes. The report is expected to be released soon. I received a letter from the Competition Commission requesting us to hold any procurement by USASA okay. on the sort of boxes. We are meeting with USASA, actually I'm meeting them today, this afternoon, to look at various ways, what is it that we can do, but we also engage in National Treasury and the Chief Procurement Office right. to see, in terms of going forward, what is it that we can do to avoid such matters so that we don't have any more delays. That's what I'm saying. We've brought everybody, literally. We've asked the, the teams and to say they must assign at least somebody who can have three days mm -hmm. allocated to digital migration. Sure. I believe all we can do is to wish you the best of luck going forward. Thank Definitely. you so much for coming. <laughs> Definitely. It's, it's something that has to happen. I would have loved to touch on the issue of the SABC and the appoint and CO, but we don't have time. Thank you so much for coming through, Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to the Communications Minister, Mamu for joining us to explain where we are in terms of uh, migrating digitally. would like to hear from you on what you think about the issue at Morning Live SABC. It's our Twitter handle at 730